Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives. Uh, still working on our mathematics N5, uh, having our revisions. Uh, we have the question that we are going to be uh, focusing on that is uh, on our limits and uh, continuity in this case. Uh, remember, we talked about this as a separate topic, uh, which was important. Now we have a, got a question that you're going to attempt from our August 2023 exams. All right, question number one, we're given on 1.1 to determine uh, the following limits in this case. All right, so 1.11 we are given. The following expression that is y is equal to the limit of uh, this whole part uh, taken for the values of x being limited to zero. So as you can see, our x is approaching to zero in this case. So what we simply need is to apply, uh, is to substitute our values, all right? So we can take this to the numerator on our calculator. We can substitute and check if we are obtaining exact values. So we are going to start with what is in the numerator in this case. All right, so this one is going to be E, which is uh, this part here to the exponent of uh, minus x squared, whereby our x there is a zero. So it's going to be uh, minus zero squared of which uh, zero squared guys is same as what is same as zero. But uh, for the sake of uh, just revision, that is what you're supposed to have. Uh, then whatever that we have, we subtract the lean. So it's minus uh, the lean of uh, one plus X, which is going to be one plus our X there being a zero in this case, all right? Minus one. So this is what we have on top. Everything there is going to give us what is going to give us a zero. So that means in this case here, we are obtaining a zero over. We do the same thing on this part uh on our calculator again so here i'm just gonna have this my calculator back to the normal setup all right so i'm going to have the cos of x which is the cos of zero in this case minus the sine of x which is the sine of zero in this case minus one like this so this gives us a zero so we are obtaining a zero over zero in this case i explained that whenever you obtain this condition whereby uh, the numerator is a zero, the denominator is a zero in this case, or when it may be you are working with infinity, you might have that infinity over the infinity in this case. I said whenever you have this condition, you are supposed to apply the L hospitals rule. In this case, we are supposed to apply L hospitals rule, whereby what are we actually talking about? We are simply differentiating the numerator, also differentiating the denominator. All right, so meaning to say this part was going to end up as uh, y is equal to. So like I said, we are supposed to differentiate what is in the numerator in this case. We differentiate e to the exponent of uh, minus x squared, right? Remember the derivative of lean, if you are differentiating uh, lean in this case with respect to x. If you had e, I mean, with respect to x, we are going to find its derivative of f of x times e to the exponent of what of f of x. So, meaning to say here, this is our f of x e to the exponent of minus x squared. So, what is our f of x there? It's minus x squared. So, we need its derivative in this case. Remember, we are talking about differentiating. So we're going to find the derivative of minus x squared, which is minus 2x in this case, multiplied to e to the exponent of f of x, meaning to say multiplied to the whole function as it is e to the exponent of uh, minus x squared. All right, we are done with the lean. Well, with the e in this case, we move on to the lean. Remember also our derivatives, the derivative with respect to x of a lean, if we are dealing with the lean f of x is a function of, uh, of uh, f of x. Remember for a lean, we are supposed to find the derivative of that function, all right, that you are given. So this will be the derivative of that function over the original function, which is f of x. So meaning to say, you need the derivative of this function that is inside. So we are going to obtain minus, remember the first derivative of f of x, this is our, f of x in this case. So it's an application of derivatives. So differentiating our f of x, that's a zero here. x gives us a one. Everything over 
our f of x, which is the whole function as it is, which is one plus what? One plus x. Then minus one, the derivative of minus one, that's a zero, it's a constant, this one. So we obtain what? We obtain a zero in that case. All right, so everything, now we are going to do the same thing even in our denominator here. We are supposed also to find the derivative of each term. Remembering the derivative, of course, that's a negative uh, sine of x. We move on to sine in this case. So we are going to differentiate sine. So the derivative of a sine, it's a cos. So remember, but here already there's a negative that we are already given here. So sine changes to a positive cos. So it is not going to affect anything. So it's going to be minus cos since there's a negative. So it's minus like this, but the derivative of a sine is a positive cos in this case like this. So it's negative times cos x, which you going to be, which is going to remain as minus cos x. The derivative of a negative one in this case, that is going to be a zero. All right, so in this whole part, we are saying y is being limited, all right? We are supposed to have our limits here. Let me indicate because we are given uh, the limit in this case. So we are saying our y is being limited in this case, uh, whereby the values of x are being limited to, be, to where? x is approaching to zero in this case, so y is uh, taken from this whole limit. What are we going to do in this case? We have differentiated, we've applied our L hospitals rule in this case, which states that we are supposed to differentiate both the numerator and the denominator. After that, you're going to substitute again the values that you're given, the value of x, and see what is going to happen this time, where x is what? Approaching to zero. So where there is x, we are going to put a zero, but here by just me looking at there is a zero here. So if you multiply whatever that you're going to obtain here by a zero, it's going to be a zero. So meaning to say we are going to have zero minus. If you substitute x here, it's going to be one over one plus, which is going to be a one in this case. So it's going to be one over one. So meaning to say on the numerator, we can actually simplify this further. We are not obtaining a zero or we are not obtaining what? And infinite. So y is going to be zero minus one, okay, over. In the denominator, we do the same thing. We substitute x here. We substitute our x again being a zero in this case. So let us see from our calculator, the sign of zero is what? It's a zero in this case, all right? The sign of uh, a zero in this case, that's a zero. So meaning to say here, we are going to obtain a uh, zero minus the cosine of a zero in this case, the cosine of a zero is a one. So you're going to have zero minus one. So we are not having uh, zero over zero or infinity over infinity. If we, if on a condition that we substituted these values and here we obtained zero on top, everything, we got zero also. We're going to differentiate again. We're going to apply our L hospital rule again. But in this case, we are not having that. And this part is the same as this. So meaning to say our y is simply going to be what? Our y is simply going to be a one, a, a one at the end. So therefore, y is going to be equal to one. So that was the condition of our question. In this case, we're simply going to substitute our values. If we obtain zero over zero, we apply the L hospitals rule, we substitute again. So in this case, it was just a direct that after substituting, we are obtaining an exact value. If not, if like I said, if we are going to obtain infinity over infinity or zero over zero, we are going to apply the L hospital. So again, that is the condition that you're going to be working with. All right, so let us check the second part. Uh, on our second part here, we are given the limit again, y is equal to the limit of uh, this part. So as we see, we are limited to the x approaching to zero in this case. So what we simply have to do is substitute here, two to the exponent of zero is gonna be a one, two to the, uh, three to the exponent of zero is gonna be a one. So it's one minus one, which is a zero, one minus one, which is a zero uh, as it is like this. So the moment we are obtaining a zero over zero, don't forget we are supposed to apply our L hospitals rule. That's, that's the condition. So whenever you have this condition or infinity over infinity, I repeat, you are supposed to apply 
a hospital rule, whereby you are simply finding the derivative of f of x over the derivative of gx. In this case, this is our f of x on top, our gx in the denominator. So we're going to find the derivative of those. That is the only idea that we have there. So meaning to say on this part here, we are going to find the derivative, all right? Because we obtained zero over zero. So we're going to find what the derivative. So y is going to be equal to the limit in this case of x uh, approaching to zero. So like I said, we are going to find the derivative, all right? So we have two to the exponent of uh, minus x. So the question now comes back to you is that how do you differentiate this from our mathematics N4? We worked with this type of uh, a derivative a lot, whereby we said uh, the derivative with respect to x of a raised to a function of f of x in this case is simply going to be the first derivative of that function times the a to the exponent of the f of x times the lean of the base, which is the lean of A. So that is how we simply work out uh, this type of a condition. So what are we simply saying in this case? We are simply saying here, we are going to have two to the exponent of minus X, meaning to say what we are referring to as our F of X in this case is the minus X, A to the exponent of F of X. It's a constant, a number, which is our A raised to a function of x, which is negative one in this case. So what is the derivative of negative one x, negative x? We are going to obtain negative one, the derivative. So that's negative one, which is just right as negative, all right? Times a to the exponent of x. So it's gonna be negative one times a, which is our two in this case, to the exponent of minus x multiplied to the lean of a, which is the lean of our base, which is the, the, the number that is our a in this case. So it's gonna be multiplied to the lean of uh, a in this case, okay? Our a, yeah, it's what? It's two, so it's gonna be lean of uh, two in this case. All right, everything, all right, the derivative of one there is a zero. So we are going to have everything over. We move on to the, G, uh, G prime X, which is the derivative of the denominator in this case. We are now dealing with the, the denominator in this case. So the derivative again of our F of X, which is uh, minus X in this case, what is the derivative? We say it is minus one times the A to the exponent of F of X, which is the three to the exponent of uh, minus X in this case, times the lean of the best, the lean of A, which is the lean of what? The lean of three the derivative of one, which is a zero. So meaning to say we are done in this case with our derivative, all right? So what you're supposed to do is to substitute, but here we can just cancel this part at this part. We substitute our X being a zero. So if we substitute a zero here, we substitute a zero here, three, two to the exponent of zero, that's a one. Three to the exponent of zero, that's a one. So meaning to say this one is not going to give us zero over zero, whereby we have to apply the L hospitals rule again. It's giving us direct values. So y at the end is going to be, we said here we are going to obtain a one times the lean of two. So it's going to remain as the lean of two over, if you substitute a zero here, we are going to obtain a one, three to the exponent of zero is a one. So one times lean of three is going to be the lean of three. So that is what you're going to have at the end. Or you can write this as a decimal, uh, or you can just leave it like that. Or you can write as a decimal, which is going to be, uh, 0 0,631 in this case. All right, so this is how we could have simplified this part. We move on uh, to the other part, which is 1.2. So 1.2, it was for us to find the values or the value or the values of X for which our F of X is discontinuous in this case, if F of X is given by this uh, expression. Uh, remember, for this expression to be discontinuous, it means our denominator here must be a zero. Once it's a zero like this, it means it's now up to infinity. We are now not having exact values. The moment our denominator is a zero, our function is referred to as a discontinuous. So meaning to say, what is in the denominator here is what? Is the lean of X. The lean of X must be equal to zero so that it becomes what? Discontinuous. That is the condition.
the lean of x must be equal to zero so that it becomes what? Discontinuous. So what you are going to simply do now is to find the value of x. This is an equation. Remember I always say the lean of x here is simply, once you see the lean, the lean itself like this, it simply means the logarithm in the base of e. So if we are saying the lean of x, then it means the logarithm of x in the base of e. So here we are given the lean of x, we can write this in a log form, the one that we understand. So if we write this, it is going to be the logarithm of x in base of e, which is equal to zero. Why writing in a log form? Remember, we want to find an expression, we want to find the exact value for x. We know that in our log form, there's this part here that we understand from our log form that uh, we can convert from a log form, the logarithm of A in base of B, if it is equal to, this is in log form, it simply can be converted in this case to an exponential or to an initial equation, whereby we are going to have this A equal to the B to the exponent of C. So this is being written now in exponential form. A, this number that is affecting our log, is equal to the best, which is our B, the best to the exponent of the answer. And this is the condition that we have, whereby X here is representing our A. So we saw that in, in, in exponential form, it is going to be A is equal to, so that means this X is going to be equal to the B to the exponent of C, the best to the exponent of the answer, the best, which is E to the exponent of the answer. That's how we end up with this E, so it's E, to the exponent of zero there, knowing that e to the exponent of zero is going to give us what? It's going to give us a one. So that means we have the value of x, which is going to make this uh, lean of x to be equal to zero. At the moment, we substitute this value of x, which is one in this case on our lean, we've got lean x, we substitute lean one like this, the answer there, is supposed to be a zero. And, and once it is a zero, it means this function is now discontinuous. That is now, it is approximating to what to infinity now because the denominator cannot be equal to zero. All right, so these are the typical conditions as we saw. That was our question number one uh, for August uh, 2023 exams. Uh, let us just work on these revisions as we prepare for the other revisions that are ahead of time but for now that's it guys till we meet again